Hello everybody, welcome back to today's video. Today we are checking out how to make a bungee cord server. In this case, we are making a 1.8 bungee cord server, but this works for the entire thing, which is pretty cool. So it could work for any Minecraft version. Just make sure you get your correct spigot jars. Today we are gonna check out how we actually set this up correctly. I'm using Windows for this tutorial, but it should work. it's the same setup for any operating system. Um, it's just different like uh, ways to get the jars and stuff. If you haven't looked at my bungee cord, I mean uh, build tools tutorial video on how to compile build tools which is right here um, if you don't know how to compile build tools make sure to go check out the tutorial that I'll link at the top of the cards right now and I'll also link in the description of this video so make sure you go build your jar you want for the version of Minecraft you want using build tools it's doing it right now um, so make sure you do that because it gives you the most up-to-date thing don't use any site like get bucket or get spigot or anything they are not up to date they don't work correctly you have to build using build tools it's the best way to do it all right so how do we set up bungee cord well the first thing you need to know is we need three servers for this minimum so I have my bungee cord server and my spigot first server and I have my second spigot server bungee cord requires at least three separate servers to actually work its point is to split up the load between servers so you can join different servers play different mini games etc every server has a different um, setup and everything works like that so why don't we download bungee cord bungee cord you do not have to compile through build tools because it was not included in the DMCA against spigot so we can just go to this link which I'll leave at the top of the description as well and you click bungee cord it will then download and all you have to do is drag this into your bungee cord folder where you have a start.bat I will provide the start.bat in the description of this video the code to it all you got to do is create a new text file and change the back of it to bat and name it something and it will work like that I'll also provide a download link to this start.bat as well in the description so you can just download it and start it if you wish so we'll go ahead and drop this uh, bungee cord in bungee cord jar into our spigot I mean our bungee cord folder and make sure you make sure the bungee cord which we have here we have to name it exactly what the jar is I don't recommend putting this over a gigabyte of RAM bungee cord will never need over a uh, gig gigabyte of RAM then we can just start and it's going to create all the files in here which we'll need and you can say it's listening on 2577 so we're gonna press it's not stop it's end on bungee cord so we'll end that real quick and we'll go into our config and we'll configure some stuff before we even get started well first of all we want to dis we want to allow forward support so I'm just gonna say true we can have some forward support we have no player limit if you want to set a player limit to like a thousand you can do that you got your default permissions I like recommend leaving these alone for now got your timeout leave that online mode I don't know why anybody ever turns this off but I would keep it on then you got server which we're gonna edit momentarily you got all of this which is telling what um, address you're gonna use for us it's gonna be two 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 five five six five so we'll change that the max players will put a thousand tab size is 60 force default server I like putting this to true which means you'll always join the same server and enable IP forwarding um, other than that you can just change the groups if you wish here or log pings or stuff and then we're gonna change this up once we start our actual spigot server so just to make it easy I'm gonna create our lobby server or our server we'll, we'll just name it server one here We'll name this server one make sure the spacing does not uh, get messed up or anything so we'll name that server one and we're gonna change it just up one and we're gonna copy this because we have two servers and paste in the exact same thing make sure the lining up stays the, exactly the same you want to change it to a different server and a different port so in this case we have two two five five six six and two five five six seven for our server one and server two so remember these and um, for priorities down here you just want to make it whatever your default lobby server is in our case it's server one then you can just save and then restart your bungee cord and technically right now it's gonna show on on your thing it's just gonna say just another bungee cord forced host now we can change that uh, later on but for now we don't need it so I'm gonna go ahead and end this because it started up correctly and then what we have to do is we have to go create our spigot server now so if we go into build tools I think it's almost done yes it's almost done it's still still going hard and doing all its work so we'll just close that out real quick and when we go to our spigot one this is where we're gonna create it so we're just gonna make sure that our spigot jar is ready it's gonna be called server we'll name it server dot jar to make sure it's easy and we'll also give it 
we'll just keep it at uh, one gigabyte, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM for this example, just so it doesn't crash or anything when creating worlds. So once this finishes, I'll show you what we do next. We're gonna drag it in here and we're gonna configure a few files before the server even works. So it's, you can also use, if you want multiple Bungie Court instances, you can use Redis Bungie. It's in our Redis tutorial, Redis Desktop Manager tutorial. I'll also leave a link to that in the description, but I don't recommend doing that if you're a beginner because that's way harder to get set up and it requires a lot more. And it's not needed for any networks that have more, like less than a thousand players, it's really not needed. So you don't really need to do worry about that. Once you have this, you can just go ahead and close it out. You'll never need that again, unless you want to upgrade Bungie Cord, which it does at every Minecraft version. So I recommend upgrading quite a lot. So you can have as many spigot servers under a Bungie Cord instance as possible. You can have like a hundred if you really want to, but I would recommend keeping it at a, um, I would keep it around. I've had a maximum of like 40 servers under one Bungie Cord. It's a little excessive, but I have had that at points. Um, so that is good. So if you have any questions on how to do any of this stuff, remember to join our discord and I would be happy to help you. Um, I'm just waiting for this pretty much to finish before we continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back right when this is done and we can continue from there. So as you see here, our spigot build tools has successfully compiled a spigot 1.8.8 jar. So we can go ahead and close this and we're going to copy this jar into our spigot uh, server and we're just going to name it server.jar exactly how we set it up originally and we're going to start our server so this is for our first spigot server this is the first one that we're making and it's going to say you got to agree to the lula so you're going to go ahead and click true on here and you're going to go ahead and start up the server and it's going to go ahead and load up for a moment and it may take a second to generate the world but we don't have to really worry about this yet so once this loads up, we're going to stop the server and we're going to edit a few files that is going to allow us to connect it to a Bungie Cord instance. So remember, if you want to do this with separate hosts on your different, like if you have like four hosts and you want to do it on different hosts, you are able to do that. Just make sure you set up the IPs correctly in the IP config on the config file in Bungie Cord. Otherwise, it will not work. So I will show you that in a moment. For this example, we're using localhost, so all our IPs are 0000 or whatever it is, or 127.0.0.1. So just make sure to um, keep that off. Now that it's started up, we can go ahead and stop the server. Um, if I can, sp I can't spell today apparently. There we go. So I'm gonna stop the server. Now what we're gonna do in this folder here is we're gonna open up the server.properties file in Notepad++ or any other ones you have here. We're going to go down until we see server port. Now we have this 25565 is our default. We don't want this. We want to set it to whatever we set up in our Bungie Cord config file. In this case, it's 25566. So we're going to set that to 66 instead of 65. We're going to go down here where it says online mode true. We're going to turn that to false because online mode is now handled through Bungie Cord only. And that is it for this file. You're going to save and close it. Now you're going to open up your spigot.yml file and edit it with a notepad plus plus or a notepad. Um, version you wish and you're going to change Bungie Cord from true to false here I mean from false to true and then if you wish you can close out and go open up the bucket.yml file and you can change connection throttle to negative one this will make it so it will not throttle you when switching servers inside then all you have to do is start up you can now start up Bungie Cord first and then you can start up your spigot server and that's going to listen and connect when it's created successfully now, pretty much, we're going to do the exact same thing we just did in here. We're going to copy our jar, and we're going to name it server.jar, and we're going to switch our start.bat to say, instead of spigot 1.8, it's going to start when it hits server.jar, and we're going to start this up, do the exact same thing we just did, but we're going to change just the port. So pretty much, you get to do the exact same thing over and over for every single server you make, or you could just copy and paste all the files and from one server to another and then create it that way and then just change the port and so you say it's failed to bind port that's because we haven't actually changed the port we have to open our server.property file again change it from 25565 to 25567 like we've already put set online mode to false save close and then we can open up our spigot.yml just again change bungee cord which um, is down here and this it it generates differently sometimes so just ignore it. It will always be the same. And then go to our bucket and do the exact same thing we just did. Set it to negative one. Save. Then we'll go ahead and start up our Minecraft server again. And we can actually test if we can join the Bungie Cord network. I talked a little quickly there, but it's exactly what we just did. So it's not that bad. 
So if we open up our Minecraft now, you can see we have the Bungie Court instance on localhost, or you can just type in localhost. Now we can go ahead and double click and join and see what happens. Ah, so I'm in. So you see, I joined this server. I connected to the Bungie Court and it sent me to the default server of server-1. Now to confirm that we can join this server, all we have to do is type slack server. And you can say you, can, you are currently connected to server one, which is this server we started here. You may connect to the following server at this time, server one, server two. If I click to connect to server two, I'm gonna log in over here and log out over here, which means I am now connected to the second instance of the server. So this could be a server of like mini games or something. And then if you do server dash one again, slack server and then server dash one, I'm back on the original server I was on. So you have successfully set up Bungie Cord. If you have any questions on how to do this, please let us know by leaving them in the comments or the description or the Discord server, and I would be happy to help you. Um, this is quite easy to set up if you know what you're doing, and I hope this tutorial has helped you out a little on how to do it. If you have any questions, again, leave them in the comments or join our Discord. There's a video coming out later this week on how to install like via version and stuff on Monkey Cord, so those will be coming out later this week. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Noodles, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.